podcasts, I've been talking about using the Express framework to create websites with JavaScript and Node. In a future lesson, I'll be talking about creating database-driven websites. But before then, I need to introduce a database that you can use with my lessons, and that database will be Postgres. So what is a table? Think about that. Well, perhaps this might come to mind, but this isn't the table we're talking about when it relates to software development. Formally, a table is a system of rows and columns, typically data that you can view in rows and columns. So here's an example of an order table. Let's make it a little bit more simple. And again, this is a spreadsheet, and I'm sure you've seen spreadsheets before. Here is a simple table of customers. So we have IDs, names, and genders. So the column headers are at the top, and the actual records are underneath that. On another tab of this worksheet, or of this workbook, technically this is a worksheet, um, I have a table of donuts that are also identified with a unique identifier. And then I have another table here, which is a list of orders. And notice that this orders table not only has a list of unique identifiers, but it also has a list of IDs related to other things that are in my, what I will call my database, or things that are unique identifiers in other tables. So I had my customers table and I had my donut table. They had unique identifiers in there like customer ID two. And I can go back to that table and see that two is Wanda Maximoff. And here I've augmented this orders table so that you can see that this is um, referring to a row in another database, sorry, in another table. And this is marked with an F key. That means it's a foreign key. And over here, I have marked these unique identifiers for orders with this um, syntax here, which means primary key, which means this is a unique identifier. This particular column is a unique identifier for each row that is listed here. Okay. So what is a database? A database is software that manages tables of data. I just showed you a few of them, and a database can manage them. And typically, when we're talking about websites, uh, a database can have tables that have millions of records and allow access to those records very quickly. If you study databases more formally, there's something called an entity relationship diagram. Now this is sort of a cartoony uh, representation of it, but um, because tables are oftentimes related to one another, for example, there are there's an orders table and then there's customers, and so one of the columns in the orders table contains customer IDs, we use a um, a, a design tool called the Entity Relationship Diagram to show the relationships among the different tables. And this can be very helpful when you're working with lots of tables. Okay, in terms of the most popular databases that you can use to manage tables for things like websites, um, here's a result that I pulled out of a search engine. And it, noted, it notes that uh, some of the top ones include MySQL, Oracle, and Postgres. Um, PostgreSQL more formally, but typically we just call it Postgres. So the one that we're going to be using today is Postgres. Now, I'm going to give you just enough information so that you feel comfortable creating database-driven websites um, in Node using Express, but this is not a comprehensive lesson on databases. This is just showing you how to get the basics done in Postgres. So. If you want to use Postgres, let me first bring up a web browser. And you would need to download Postgres. So if I just type in download Postgres, you will see postgresql.org. I'm clicking. I'm waiting. Um, and so even though you're on the formal corporate website here, if you click on whatever version is that you want to down, download, it uh, eventually takes you to this link which goes to another website. So notice in the lower left it says Enterprise DB. So regardless of which option you pick, you eventually end up over here where you can click on these options and download and install Postgres. Now, the database itself is a service that runs in the back end of your computer, meaning it doesn't have a graphical user interface, but if you 
contact it with software, then it can respond. Um, so if you want to load up information in there, oftentimes what people will do is they will create, they will have a separate graphical user interface for interacting with this thing that we call the database server. And this particular package here, uh, regardless of which one you include, has both the database server that runs on the back end as well as a GUI client. And in this case, the graphical user interface that's like a web browser um, is called PG Admin 4. Now, at the time of me writing this video or creating this video, uh, a problem that uh, I've run into is that PG Admin 4 that's packaged here on this website doesn't work. Uh, it, every time you click on the icon for it, uh, it in the on the Mac, I, I haven't had any problems on Windows, but on the Mac, every time I click on the launcher for that program, it um, it breaks. So um, I, and I have to reboot my computer. So what I've done for these videos is if I go to pgadmin.org, I can go to a download here. And the version that I can download on this particular website does work fine. So just know that, that you want to do that if you're using a Mac and you run into a problem. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and dive in. So for me, I can just type in pgadmin4. It's installed. The one with the gray icon is the one that I install separately from here. The one with the transparent background is the one that came with the installer, and that's the one that doesn't work. So if I click on this, it usually takes a little while to open up. Still waiting, 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 waiting. One thing uh, I should mention is that when you do that initial install, it's going to ask you to create a password for a default user that is called Postgres. Now, as I log in for the first time to this graphical user interface for the database, this first password is not that password. So when you get to this page for the first time, just click Reset Master Password. This is just for getting access to this page here. All right. Um, I'm going to have a little bit more than you do as you come here for the first time. Um, but one of the databases that's here, these are all databases, and one of the databases that's here is, um, for me, the latest one, Postgres 13. And if I expand this or try to connect to it, notice that initially there's a red X there. That means I'm not connected to it right now. Now here is where it says, enter in the password for the Postgres user. So this is the one where if you lose this password after, you know, while you're doing the install, then you have to uninstall Postgres again uh, and then reinstall it. And annoyingly, um, it can leave a bunch of artifacts in your folder uh, where it deleted. And so it's a really ugly process to uninstall and reinstall um, because it sometimes will save that initial password that you typed in that you forgot. So bottom line, don't forget your password when you do the install. And if you do, then just look carefully online for how to do a complete uninstall of Postgres and follow those tutorials. Okay, so me, I happen to know the password that I used when I installed this, so I'm in good shape. Now, um, Postgres is an enterprise class database. So there are simpler databases that I could do a demonstration with. The good news is that they're easy to follow and create stuff with. The bad news is they're not ter some of them aren't terribly useful for actually putting into production. The downside to using this enterprise database is that uh, it looks really complicated. And so I can't show you all of the features that relate to this database server, but I'll show you some of the things that will be useful for programming in my upcoming lessons. Okay, so right here I have a list of databases. If I expand this, some people call that a twisty. Um, you might have just one database there. Let me go ahead and right click on this and I'm gonna create a new database. So you can create as many as you want and you could think of these as filing cabinets that hold tables. And whenever you connect to Postgres from software code, you can select which filing cabinet or which database you wanna to connect to. So I will say, um, well, I'll just do that. I'll say create a database and I don't need to do a whole lot here. I just need to create a unique, unique name. So I'll call this Paradise Donut. So that's my fictitious corporation that makes donuts. And 
there's already a user with a, an associated password that'll be associated with this particular database. I don't need to do anything else, but, I, but just note if I go over to this last tab, SQL, this is the code that's going to run on the back end. So imagine if you had a little black terminal window or something. Uh, this is the code that you could use to directly interact with the server over a terminal type connection. Um, but the GUI that we're using right here is going to create that code for us and execute it. And SQL, by the way, is the language that you communicate with databases with. All right, so I go ahead and I click Save. And then you note uh, right there that it is visible. Let me go ahead and expand that. Okay, now there's a whole bunch of stuff now that, uh, underneath this. And it went from gray to having some color. The only thing that I care about as part of this lesson is going to be where the tables are found. And that's going to be under Schemas. And then down there under Tables. So there's no tables right now, but let's go ahead and work on creating one. So let's say that I want to create a record of the customers that frequent my donut company or one of my donut stores. So let's go ahead and create a table. And this is kind of the important part of this lesson. So we right click on there and do create table and we see things like name, owner, schema, all this other stuff. Really, we just need to have a name for our, in essence, our spreadsheet, our table that will be of customers. So I'll type the word customer. And then I'm going to go over to the next page, which is the column. So remember when we're looking at a table that there are typically column headers across the top? Well, this is where we, we do that. So... Um, as part of my customer table, I'm going to click this plus sign here to add a column and I will have customer underscore ID be the name of the first column. Now in databases, we need to specify a data type for each column. So is this, for example, a date? Is it a number? Is this text? What are we storing here? Um, in some databases, there are relatively few data types, and in Postgres, there appears to be an insane number of data types. But at the end of the day, we just want numbers, and we want dates and strings. Um, so there are a lot of options. If I open this up, it looks like this is the number of options, but that's not correct, because if I start scrolling down, this little scroll bar gets smaller and smaller until it turns into a tiny dot. So it helps if you know what you want to put in there. Um, one common thing I would want to put in there is an integer. So for an ID, that makes sense. Um, and for this lesson, I will leave it as integer. Um, this means that I have to formally enter in a unique number every time I create a record. But there's another way to do this, and that's using serial, which is their name for a number that automatically counts up with each record that you create. So typically when I'm creating tables, I'm always going to use this. Um, but for this first demonstration, I will just use integer and type in numbers manually. Okay, um, other things. Uh, this one, this, this field right here says, do you want to make it so that this field can be null? And it's kind of a funny way of saying it. If I click this to yes, that means that this is a required field. So just think of it that way. So make it required. And then primary key, is this going to be the unique identifier? Is this column going to be the unique identifier for every row in this table? And in this case, the answer is yes. All right, let's go ahead and add in some more information. And I'll do customer underscore name. And you can't use spaces, but underscores are all right. And I prefer using lowercase for everything related to tables. Okay, for their name, um, in most databases, you're offered a column type, which is called varchar, which means a varying number of unique characters. So a car or a char is a single characters, and a varchar is um, an unknown ahead of time number of characters. And so... Um, 
Well, in this case, I'm going to type in something that's a little different. I'll do character varying. And that is the word that we use in Postgres to show that we, we don't know how long this is going to be. It could be three characters long. It could be 100 characters long or bigger. But that's how we set it. And if I go over here, do I want this to be a required field? And I will say yes. And then let's just say I'm tracking their gender. I don't know why I want to track their gender, but let's just say that we did. Uh, really, I'm doing that because I want to show the use of the char. So in this case, a char or a car, um, this means a single character. So we can just use M for male or F for, for female, and we can make that required as well. Uh, all right, so I'm done with my simple example here. If I go over here to this last tab for SQL, we can see the SQL code that's going to be generated and then sent to the actual database server. And um, so it looks similar to the options that we selected. And with that, we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And then as I did that, immediately some more information appeared over here on the right side. So we now have a table called Customer. And so as many times as we created a table, we would see additional things here. Let's go ahead and add some data to this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say View Edit Data, All Rows. Okay, so let's go ahead and start typing in here. Down at the bottom, this is a little grid where we can type information in. So Customer ID, the first one, we'll call, and then I'll double click in here and I'll say, um, I'll put in my name. And then down here, I'll do a, another number. And that's my lovely wife. And then I'll do maybe my, my son. He plans to be a professional hockey player someday, so maybe this name will become famous. Okay. So note that I put in a number in this column manually. If instead of choosing integer when I was creating the table, if I had instead chosen serial, then I would not have to have typed in anything here. Okay, uh, so it looks like we actually have data that is part of our table of type customer right now or named customer, but this data is not actually in there yet. And sometimes I've made a mistake where I left this page and went to go query my database table and nothing came back. And the reason was, is that when you're using this interface, you have to go back all the way up to the top here where you see this little symbol that says save data changes. And once you do that, you get this success message and then the stuff is in there. So if I right click on here again and I say view edit data, all rows, um, everything is there. If I wanted to update this, maybe, uh, what should I change? I don't know why I would have a number at the end of my name, but just for example, I could update that and then I could save the changes to the table and everything would be good. Okay, just as a side note, um, if I right click on this and I do query tool, I could use SQL. Now, those that are watching the video, you may or may not know SQL. I'll just give you some examples right now. Um, so if I expand this right now, just for reference, I can be reminded of what my column names are. So this is SQL. When uh, Node and Express and other libraries are uh, interacting with your database, they at some point need to turn the commands for interacting with the database into SQL commands. Uh, when you use a library like Connex, uh, you won't have to know SQL, but just know that underneath the covers, this is what's happening. So right here, I'm going to type select star from customer. And then I will click on this icon over here that runs it, and this returns a bunch of data. So that's one thing I could do. And then I could also only return certain columns. So maybe I only want just the customer name. 
So star is everything, but you could also, with a comma separated list, just specify certain columns. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and so you see how just one thing was returned. All right, let me turn this back into a star again for everything. I could also filter my results. So I can put this, uh, this um, filtering clause here called where, and I could say, for example, customer ID equals two. And if I run that, then I only get that particular row. Um, so I could filter other ways as well. I could say where customer name equals a particular thing or where gender equals a particular thing. In fact, there's two males. So let's go ahead and do that and see how that works. And we use single quotes when we're matching strings. And so, so there we got two results. And then uh, there's some other things we could do like uh, update statements. Update the table customer, so something in customer. Set customer name equals, maybe I'll just go to my first name, where customer ID equals one. So I'll go ahead and run that. It says that it worked. All right, let me use this comment symbol here, two dashes, and then I'll uncomment that, and then I'll run this. And we see that my name has been updated. Okay, so again, the reason why I showed you SQL, if this is the first time you're seeing it, you don't have to memorize this, but just know that whatever you do uh, in code is going to ultimately create statements like this. So either you create these statements manually in your code, or you use some library that converts your requests into statements that look like this behind the scenes. With that, we're ready to move on to the next lesson and start using databases with Express, Node, EJS, and Connects.